Hi, I'm John Leslie. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how running your entire SaaS company in Favro can accelerate growth. There's no better testament than a company using its own product to run its business. That's the case with Favro. The Favro team uses its own SaaS collaborative planning tool to run all aspects of its company. All squads stand sync with each other by using Favro. Product development, sales, customer success, marketing, operations, finance all use the same platform they continuously develop, sell, and support as a live service. The Favro teams are their own ideal customer and have the luxury of beta testing and fine tuning new features internally before releasing them to their many thousand customer organizations worldwide. As other SaaS companies know, running a live service product requires all company functions to be aligned towards common goals, plan and execute collaboratively, measure and track progress, all with an ultimate goal of continuously delivering value to the customer. Favro empowers SaaS companies to do all of these things, accelerating growth and scaling seamlessly with the company as it expands. In addition, the platform supports the essential operational pillars of any truly agile business, transparency, autonomy, and alignment. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how Favro can be used to run all aspects of your SaaS company, ranging from leadership to development, to quality assurance, to live ops, to marketing, even supporting fast growing recruitment efforts. I'm also going to highlight recent feature releases, including automations, collection folders, and shareable links. When moving to Favro, the first step is to create an easy to navigate organizational structure that everyone in the organization will recognize. This enables team members to quickly and intuitively find what they're looking for. Favro's new collection folders are used to map your company's existing team structure directly to the platform's UI. Collection folders will be the containers for all your team level, product level, and leadership level collections. Favro collections are aptly named, containing all the product backlogs, development boards, roadmaps, marketing plans, recruitment pipelines, etc. that any particular team needs to collaborate and effectively deliver value to the customer. Prior to creating these collections, it makes sense to map the structure of your company to your Favro organization with collection folders. So as you can see here in this example, software as a service company, Favro organization, we're first using collection folders to organize by company level, starting with the executive portfolio level. This is where leadership will live primarily to drive the actual business. So the collections here would include maybe a company dashboard, an infrastructure team collection, an investment team collection, a leadership dashboard, office operations, a people operations, otherwise known as HR collection, that might look something like this. We're also mapping the product levels or program levels of the organization, as you can see here with product.ai1, which might be one software as a service product that this company develops, sells, and maintains as a live service, and product.ai2. If I open up product.ai1, for example, you can see that here are all the different teams, collections necessary to develop and support this particular product. Product Development Team 1's collection might look like this. Product Development Team 2, a DevOps collection, a product dashboard, and a product manager dashboard. So we're going to get to all these different collection types in a moment, but suffice it to say that all of the collections live within the folders relative to their level. Down here, I'm also using collection folders to map the different departments or disciplines of the organization to the tool. So you might have, for example, account management, customer success folder, a development folder, finance, IT, marketing, might contain collections that look like this, uh, maybe an external creative agency collection, uh, maybe combining marketing and dev teams into a collection like this, a marketing director dashboard, and maybe just a team level marketing team collection, internal marketing team collection like this. Through down to, again, a people operations HR collection folder, 
a QA folder, recruitment, sales folder, so on and so forth. So we're effectively using these collection folders to map the entire organizational structure to this Favreau Collaborative Planning Platform. Now creating a new collection folder is as simple as clicking on one of these plus icons, selecting new folder, giving it a name, say we want to add a community folder, give it a color, and you can add collections directly to this collection folder as you create it. Adding this community team collection to the community folder. And there you have it. It's also possible to drag and drop collections between folders, like so. Now that everyone knows how to get around your favorite organization, teams themselves should start creating their own collections and filling them with boards custom built to support their unique ways of working. Whether your team's focus is product development, DevOps, marketing, sales, recruitment, etc., every team should have their own collection. It's their space to capture, organize, and prioritize ideas, and eventually turn them into reality. The core of any team level collection is a backlog for long-term deliverables, and a Scrum or Kanban board to visualize and collaborate with team members to create the most valuable items out of that backlog. Now for an example of a team level collection, let's open up this product.ai1 collection folder and we're gonna look at this development team one's collection. Here you can see they have a product backlog that might look like this. They have a product roadmap and they also have, in their case, they're working in Scrumbon, a Scrumbon board. So here in the product backlog, this is full of cards organized into a hierarchy, which is a unique ability of Favreau to keep things organized and maybe breaking large things down into smaller things. Any one of these cards can be clicked, opening it up, and this essentially becomes a real-time collaborative workspace similar to a Google Doc for teams to collaborate. Maybe in this case, since this is a feature, to figure out number one, what is this feature going to be? And number two, how should it be developed? And that can be done with pre-built fields like these here, some custom fields like these ones you're seeing here. Team members can add custom fields on the fly if need be. They can link to other cards or boards. They can create checklists directly on the cards, even assigning at the checklist item level. They can drag and drop in images, documents, you name it. So again, this becomes a full collaborative workspace for the team members to get things done, including a comment system, as you see here over on the right, keeping the conversation relative to where the work is actually flowing. So the way this works, say you have a new feature and add that to the backlog. And you probably want to prioritize it and maybe give it relative size estimate like so. And once that feature is ready to be worked on, the team would pull it into, and in this case, Scrum Bomb Board. And now this card exists in multiple places. It exists both here in the backlog and also here on the Scrum Bomb Board. And thanks to relations, we're able to keep track of the card relative to where it exists on those other boards. So here we can see that on the product development team one scrum bond board, it's currently at the selected stage. As this gets pulled from selected into in development, you can see that automatically reflected back here in the backlog. So this becomes essentially a way to track the status of all your features in this case, maybe even across multiple feature teams from a single location. You also have the ability to drag the card to, in this case, maybe a third board up into this product roadmap where they can maybe adjust the start and end dates like so, and maybe give this a different color if they choose to. So now this card exists in three places, on the roadmap, on the Scrum Bomb board, and it originated in the product backlog. 
For the team level collections, it's also important to call out that the boards themselves have multiple views. So right now we're looking at this Kanban board as a Kanban. We could switch that to a sheets view like this, or to maybe a timeline view like this. Any card that has a date on it will be displayed in this timeline view. So we're looking at the same cards in multiple ways. You can even toggle to charts and graphs, maybe a burn down chart like this one to see how this team is progressing to maybe everything they committed to in a sprint. Or a cumulative flow diagram like this one if they're choosing to work in a more flow based way. Since this is a SaaS company, they need to work in tandem with multiple teams and departments. To make this simple, Favreau has the capability to add boards and backlogs from other teams' collections. Maybe this development team needs to work in tandem with a DevOps team. They can simply click the plus here, say add from another collection, and bring in that DevOps team's Kanban board like so. So say maybe they're working on a particular feature, this new feature, it makes it to QA review, and it's ready for maybe some DevOps automated testing. Since we now have the DevOps team's board also in our collection, even though it originated in the DevOps team's collection, we can take this new feature and drag and drop it on to the DevOps team's board like so. And thanks to relations, if we turn on relations on the board, we can see directly on the card the status of the DevOps team's progress on this feature from the relations on the card here. We can see it's currently selected. If it gets pulled into automated testing, we can see that automatically reflected here again, thanks to relations. So there you have one good example of a team level collection and even a team working with another team from a single screen collection. Let's take a look at a second team level collection in Favreau. So we're gonna look at a marketing team's collection. So we'll open up this marketing collection folder, navigate down to this marketing team collection here. And as you can see, similar to the development team, they have a backlog, but in this case, it's full of campaigns, marketing campaigns broken down into the deliverables for those campaigns. They also have a marketing roadmap. They have a sprint board that is being fed from this backlog, tracking the completion of these different marketing deliverables through from start to finish. And now they're probably also going to need to stay in close collaboration with development, maybe creating marketing content for new upcoming features. So in that case, they brought in the product development teams board directly into their collection so they can see what's coming. They can see this new feature again is at the QA review stage. It's very close to being ready for release. So they probably want to take this and drag and drop it onto their board. So now they can start to build out the marketing content to communicate this new feature, this new capability to the customer base. Also very common to SaaS companies is the need to collaborate with external partners and outsourcers. So continuing with the marketing example, we're gonna take a look at this marketing director's dashboard. And from this marketing asset backlog, the marketing director or whoever has access to this particular dashboard collection can plan, track, and drive the creation of these marketing assets from a single backlog across both internal teams, like you can see here on this internal marketing content flow board, and also those external creative agency partners, maybe in this particular example. So thanks to features like guests and external members, it's very easy to bring external partners closer to your internal teams, making them feel more like an extension of the company. And again, thanks to relations from this backlog, you're able to see not only what team is working on each one of these deliverables, these marketing assets, 
but also the status of each one of these marketing assets. So we can see this one is being worked on by an external team. It's currently at the creation phase. This one's being worked on by an internal team and it's currently at the review stage. So there you have two very good examples of team level collections in Favro. Product managers and project managers need to see a comprehensive overview of the entire SaaS product under their responsibility. A product dashboard collection is their command central, bringing together all teams across multiple departments, empowering them to define product vision, set goals, prioritize backlogs, create roadmaps, and track progress all from a single screen. The pain of having to jump back and forth between multiple team projects and boards as they'd have to do in other tools is completely removed. Product dashboards help product owners remove silos and avoid common mistakes that slow the flow of customer value. Let's take a look at this example product dashboard for product.ai1. Up here at the very top of the collection, we have a product roadmap. This will typically be viewed in a timeline view as we're seeing here, but with every Favreau board, this could be switched to a sheet view or a Kanban to look at those same cards detailing the future of this product in a different way. Underneath the product roadmap, this product owner has created a now, next, later board. They're taking advantage of swim lanes to separate into the different product categories. This swim lane representing the iPhone app and this swim lane representing now, next, later steps for the web app. Under this, we have a team calendar maybe setting the sprint schedule or the meeting schedule out into the near future. This could of course be shared out to team level collections to make sure everybody is in sync in the same cadence. Now, if I open up the left pane, hotkey B for this, you can see that there's also a series of backlogs in this product dashboard collection. So up at the very top is a PM backlog. This would be for the product managers to set overall strategy, break that down into the actual initiatives, overall execution, and overall user understanding. So these are goals, deliverables specific to the product manager. Now these would be flowing through a product manager combine like this, where you'd simply take the next highest priority initiative and drag and drop that onto the board like this. And again, thanks to relations, you're able to see the progress of these initiatives as they flow from left to right like this. This product manager has also brought in from the team level collections, the product backlog for the product that he's responsible for. And we've already seen this product backlog at the development team levels. But again, since these boards and backlogs can exist in multiple places, he's able to track everything from the product dashboard collection. Also very important for any product manager is quality. So as you can see, they've also brought in the escape bug backlog. Let's quickly jump over to the internal QA teams collection to take a closer look. Just by clicking that link, this product manager was able to drill into the details. Now looking at the internal QA teams collection, he can see if I close this right pane, he can see a very detailed bug list or bug backlog specific to his product. Here, maybe with the help of his team, he can set overall bug priority, driving what bugs should be fixed next. Since this bug backlog was built in Favro, the actual bug workflow can be built directly into the board, switching from a sheets view to a Kanban view, you can easily see this flow. Moving from open to bug verified to triage assigned, fix in progress, claim fixed, and fix verified. Now is a good time to highlight Favro's native JIRA integration. I have an automation set up here that as soon as a bug is actually verified, that bug should be synced to JIRA. So the same bug will be replicated in JIRA and that bug will stay in sync with the Favro card from now on. So as soon as a QA analyst verifies a bug and pulls it into bug verified, 
you'll see that it automatically replicates this card, syncs this card representing that bug to Jira, creates a link to that bug in Jira, and also maybe uh, a description which will be synced back to Jira as well. So it's a live two-way sync between the two. As soon as I save this, the same bug description is updated in Jira. Now let's go back to our product dashboard. Since this is command central for the product, you can see that we've also brought in other team backlogs. So we have the DevOps backlog, see what they're working on and the status of their projects. We've also brought in the marketing backlog from the marketing team's collection. Also some customer feedback. And we can also see what the sales team is working on. Over here on the right panel, you can see if this particular product owner, product manager wants to see more details, he can even bring in the team level boards. Here's the team board that we already saw for product development team one, for example. If he wanted to see detail from another team, he could quickly bring it in just by hitting this plus, selecting add from another collection, and maybe he wants to see what the creative agency is currently working on, their external partner. And quickly bring in their board to see the status of all of their work and deliverables. Now let me show you a quick example of an automation in Favro. If I open up this product.ai1 team calendar and look at automations, there's been an automation created here to create a recurring meeting, in this case, a recurring sprint review. If I open this up, this is very straightforward to create through this automation gallery. In this case, a recurring meeting, we're saying every two weeks, on Monday at 9 a.m. using this particular card template for sprint review, meaning maybe defining the agenda ahead of time of what the sprint review should entail, automatically create that recurring meeting for the team. As you can see here, there are numerous automation templates to help you get started. But essentially, if you can think of it, it can probably be automated. So as you can see, this product dashboard becomes the one-stop shop, the only place product owners, product managers, project managers need to go to see the overall big picture of the products under their responsibility. SaaS company founders and executives don't wanna jump between different tools and apps to get the information they need, or to drive business initiatives and set company goals. Thankfully, with Favro's company dashboard collections, they don't have to. From a single company dashboard, leaders have a real-time big picture of the entire organization. If they see something that is blocked or taking longer than expected, drilling down into the details to analyze and resolve the problem is as simple as following the Favro relations. Here at the very top of the organization sits the company dashboard. The company dashboard could either be private to just leadership within the organization, or in a more transparent company, it could be open to everyone. It's of course up to company leadership. In this example company dashboard, sitting here at the very top is a company calendar, maybe outlining the direction from an event standpoint for the entire organization. If we open up the left pane, you can see that we also have a series of backlogs, starting out with a portfolio backlog. Now this portfolio backlog is actually used to drive the overall business, strategy initiatives, business opportunities, enablers, how are we going to respond to marketplace changes, all the way down to cost savings. All of these business epics or business initiatives can be prioritized, they can be estimated, and eventually committed to a portfolio Kanban like this one. Let's take, for example, move 80% of business suite apps to mobile. 
If we're ready to work on this, or we think we're ready to work on this, we'll drag and drop it from the backlog and add it to this portfolio Kanban. Now again, this exists in both places. And once we're ready to do the analysis, we'll pull it into this column, maybe uh, figure out, is this something that's technically feasible? Do we have the budget? What's the budget we want to attribute to this particular initiative? So on and so forth. Once everything is approved, it'll eventually get pulled into implement like this. Now, of course, you can track via relations, not only the progress of this business initiative, but all of your business initiatives from a single location, being this portfolio backlog. Once something makes it to the implement stage, it's very easy to open up the card, click the three dots menu here, and say, we want to break this down, this business initiative down, to its very own board or backlog. We'll make this a backlog, and we'll create a sheets view. And we'll start to build this out. So what are the major themes or pillars? specific to this business initiative. So basically the key drivers or goals of this overall business initiative. Now this backlog could be fully flushed out maybe by a product owner or maybe a project manager. And you can take this and either add it or move it to another collection, maybe a dashboard collection or a team level collection. We'll send this to that product dashboard we already took a look at. And we have the option, of course, to either add it there or to move it there entirely. If we want to continue to track the project progress in real time of how these things are broken down and estimated, we can add it and we still have visibility to it from our company dashboard. Now, once again, since these boards in Favro can switch instantly to different views. You could take this from a Kanban and instantly turn this into a roadmap by switching it to a timeline view. So it's those same cards flowing through that Kanban, put a date on them or a date range, and you're able to view them essentially as a roadmap for the entire organization. In addition to the portfolio backlog and the portfolio Kanban and roadmap driving the overall business, you can also see the backlogs from your different products. So we have brought in the product.ai1 product backlog, where again, we can track the progress of all of these features and capabilities currently in development directly from here. We've also brought in the sales CRM backlog, maybe the marketing backlog, again, to track the progress of all the marketing initiatives, see what IT is up to. If we want to see more details of what a particular team is doing, we can, of course, bring in their boards, as we've done here for the sales team with their CRM pipeline. And also the IT Kanban board. And here we can see, oh, here's something urgent, server breach detected. This looks like something we'd probably want to take action on. So we can open up this card with these relations up here at the top of the card. We can tr quickly drill down into that IT team's collection to see more detail. And it instantly highlights that card in context to the information technology team's collection. And then we can quickly drill back up to the company dashboard once we've hopefully resolved that problem, or at least we know it's on track to being resolved. You can see here that we've also brought in both the recruitment backlog and a recruitment pipeline. As fast growing SaaS companies know, recruitment is always an ongoing effort to find and hire that top talent. So here in this recruitment backlog, we might have a list of open positions. So once a particular position is ready to start, say this chief design officer, for example, just as we did with that business initiative, you can click that card 
and break that down maybe to its own board, maybe a recruitment flow to hire for this particular position, which will always be linked back to this actual chief design officer card for traceability. I've already created one here, looks like this. So as you can see, we've set up all the phases for the actual recruitment flow from selected resumes to scheduled interviews, background check, making the offer eventually to hired. So say Vera, for example, we've taken a look at the resume, the hiring manager likes what they see, they can pull that into, okay, let's schedule some interviews. If those interviews go well, we'll do a background check. And then eventually, if that all clears, we'll make an offer, say Vera accepts that offer, and we'll pull her into hired. Here you can see another automation automatically kicked off. And what happened here is as soon as Vera was hired, it automatically added her or this card representing her to an onboarding flow or an onboarding Kanban. And you can see she's at the ready for onboarding stage. I happen to have that particular flow here. Employee onboarding from ready for onboarding get the equipments and logins ready, paperwork, orientation, product training, mentor meeting, so on and so forth. Now, as Vera gets pulled into equipment and ready for logins, maybe this is done by IT, eventually on her first day, we'll pull her into paperwork. Maybe that's done by uh, HR, so on and so forth, through orientation, product training, etc. Now, with relations displayed directly on the card, you can see what was happening as I was moving from stage to stage. You can see from a recruitment standpoint, she's of course hired. And up here in the recruitment pipeline, we can see from an onboarding perspective, she's currently at the product training stage. So that's a great example of the cards in multiple places, automations, and tracking the flow on multiple Kanban boards of a particular new hire. Now let's say for some reason, company leadership wanted to share this entire dashboard collection with maybe someone else in the company that doesn't have access to this particular collection. What they can do is use Favreau's new shareable links, get shareable link, and they have a couple of options here. They can say restricted, I only want to share this with people who are already members of this particular company dashboard, or I can share it with somebody within my organization that has the same domain name. This will actually do an authentication check to make sure that the person before they can see this collection actually does have an email address within this domain name, or I could choose to share this with anyone who has a link. And of course that link is secret and not searchable again for security reasons. So this is a great way to share Favreau information with people who may not have an actual Favreau account. And there you have it, an excellent example of a company dashboard for leadership within your SaaS organization. Things are moving too fast in the competitive SaaS landscape to be slowed down by outdated organization or tool silos. Instead, all teams, departments, leaders, and external partners can be efficiently working together in a single platform that supports all their unique ways of working and brings them together to support shared goals. As you can now see, with Favreau's collaborative planning platform, working together is taken to a new next level. Thanks and best of luck with Favreau.